Okay, so in the last video, I approached this one with it being a try. If you tried it and you got stuck, you're right. The answer to this one is going to be no inverse exists. So there are times when you have a square matrix and it doesn't have an inverse. And I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to determine that that's the case. So we have our negative 8, negative 4, 2, 1. And then on the right side, we've got our identity. I'm going to multiply the first row by negative 1 eighth, row 1. Now, if you are going to give this a try, you hit paused, you pause this, and you're trying this. If you haven't hit pause, try this from this point forward and see how far you can get until you go, huh. Okay, so the first row becomes a 1 and then a 1 half and then negative 1 eighth and 0. And the second row, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have room to do this because we're going to get stopped short here. So just write the second row the way it is. Now the second row, I want this 2 to be a 0. So I'm going to take row 1 times negative 2 and add it to row 2. So row one stays the same, and row two, negative two times one is negative two, plus two is zero. Negative two times one half is negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. Hmm. Negative two times negative one eighth is one fourth, plus zero is one fourth. Negative two times zero is zero, plus one is one. So what do I, I've got zero, zero here. That, what the heck does that mean? That means that there's no way that you can get that second value on the right to be a, a one, while the one to the, its left is a zero. So this, you can't get this value to be a one and this to remain a zero. So when you have that where you've got all zeros across the row, that means that you have no inverse. There's no inverse that's going to exist. It's like you got stuck. You hit a brick wall and there's there's no recovering from from that that uh that block. You got stopped short and you just can't go on any further because the math is just not going to let us. It's the way it is. And when it works out that way, it's nice because otherwise we have to keep working the problem. And sometimes it takes a long time to work out these problems. So there's, there's how we do that inverse. We can do these with a 3x3. Three three. So in the next video, actually I'm, I think I'll do this right here. Let's do this right here. We'll... We'll start a three by three and see if you can work along with. Actually, I'll write it down and then we'll come back in another video and we'll practice. The idea of being able to do this one just means that uh, you've got it, that you can work with these operations, like I said, this one is nice because it stops and you don't have to continue to go further. This, a three by three, takes a little bit more effort because you don't just have two rows and two columns. You have to take this further so that you get that identity. You gotta fill in more zeros and more ones. Whoops, zero. So you've gotta get that complete identity with three rows, three columns. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll do this three.